Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the start of another reading vlog. It is currently Tuesday and I thought I would start this vlog with a bit of a haul slash unboxing. So basically, right, <laughs> earlier this year I made a pre-order on Waterstones. And did that sentence make sense? I made an order on Waterstones with a load of pre-orders. <laughs> I still don't think that sentence made sense. <laughs> basically throughout this year I have been very confused <laughs> because I keep forgetting what books I've pre-ordered and what books I haven't pre-ordered and I know I could probably just log into Waterstones and find out but this way is more fun. <laughs> so a couple of months ago I had completely forgot that I hadn't pre-ordered Babel and it caused a whole thing where I was trying to find a copy and it was sold out everywhere and I was getting really stressed <laughs> but then a couple of weeks ago I got an email from Royal Mail saying Saying that they were going to be delivering my Waterstones parcel and again I was really confused because I couldn't remember what I'd ordered. <laughs> it turned out that the book that I'd ordered was The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. I don't know whether that's gonna show very well on camera but this is the Waterstones special edition which has the stenciled edges and I wanted this to match my other Waterstones special edition of The Atlas 6. So this is obviously the sequel to The Atlas 6. Haven't read The Atlas six yet but I would like to I think is this a duology if this is a duology then I might try and read it next year because then I won't be waiting for the next book to come out heard really good things about this I know that it's dark academia and it's about students and the Alexandrian society or the library of Alexandria something like that I won't read the back of this book because I don't want to spoil myself and obviously I don't want to spoil you if you haven't read this duology yet but very exciting excited to get around to this series. Hopefully soon I keep doing this where I add series to my TBR and then I don't get around to them but my plan for next year is if I start a new series then I have to finish it within a certain amount of time. I have to read the books back to back basically. That's going to be one of my rules <laughs> for next year or one of my goals because I'm fed up of adding series to my TBR and then not finishing them. So that was the first book that I picked up. <laughs> the second book which which I completely forgot about was The River of Silver by S.A. Chakraborty. So this is a collection of short stories that are set within the world of the David Bad trilogy. And I actually read this book <laughs> earlier this year. I listened to the audiobook because I saw it on script. I had completely forgot that I pre-ordered the hardback. I think I ordered the hardback because I didn't think I'd be able to get hold of the audiobook. Kind of regret ordering this now because it was quite expensive and I don't think I need a hardback. I could have just waited for the paperback, but I think I was caught up in the hype <laughs> because I loved this series so much. And to be fair, I will reread it at some point because I can remember bits from the audiobook, but I want to reread the series at some point. So it makes sense to then read the short stories physically as well. I also wanted to quickly go through my, ow, I just stabbed myself with the scissors. <laughs> I also wanted to quickly go through my Goldsboro boxes. So I actually have two Goldsboro boxes here from the Sci-Fi Fantasy Fellowship. So basically I emailed them about a month ago to tell them that I was moving and that I needed to update my address and um, they did it. It was all fine as far as I was aware but my October box hadn't shown up by the time it got to the end of the month so I was a little confused. I thought I'll just email them and double check and um, yeah it turned out that they hadn't sent the box out. <laughs> so yesterday I actually came home to two parcels. One I'm assuming is the October box and then I'm guessing the other is the November box. The October box I know is Rin Chapeco's latest book which is Silver Under Nightfall and this is very shiny actually. Well of course it's shiny because it's got a protective cover on. I keep forgetting <laughs> that Goldsboro books come with this uh, shiny plastic covering but this I have heard good things about I think. Pretty sure it's a vampire story and 
yeah, I'm excited to get to it. It's got these lovely red sprayed edges and is it signed? Yeah, it's also signed as well. Okay, so this follows a main character called Remy who's the son of a bounty hunter. Then it sounds like his mom actually eloped with a vampire and there's rumors going around that Remy is actually a half vampire himself. When a terrifying new breed of vampires is sighted outside of the city, Remy prepares to investigate alone, but then he encounters a vampire heiress and her fiance who may hold the key to defeating these creatures. So it sounds like it's gonna be very fast paced maybe. I haven't read anything by this author before, but I am excited to see if I like their writing style. I haven't actually read any of the books that I've got through this subscription yet, which is really, really annoying me because I don't wanna just collect pretty books. I wanna make sure that I'm reading the books to see if I like them. So I am hoping that I can get to this quite quickly in the new year. This definitely sounds like it's going to be a fantasy whereas the November book is looking like it's going to be sci-fi. So this is The Immortality Thief by Taryn Hunt and I like the sprayed edges on this. It's got kind of a galaxy pattern. It says here that it follows a linguist, criminal and refugee called Sean who is made an offer he can't refuse. I think he's given the choice between life in prison or salvaging data from an abandoned ship and this ship is filled with traps and monsters and it's about to be destroyed by a supernova. It seems like the data on this ship might be the key to unlocking the secrets of immortality so I'm guessing that's where the title comes from, <laughs> The Immortality Thief. I really like the cover of this as well but yeah hopefully this is another one that I can get around to in the new year. I am gonna wrap up this intro. Ah, I just dropped the book on the floor. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up this intro here because my throat is screaming at me. <laughs> I haven't even told you what I'm currently reading, but I'll do that in the next clip <laughs> once I've given my voice a bit of a break. <laughs> Okay, so I need help <laughs> because I'm currently reading The Bands of Mourning by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in Mistborn Era 2. I'm probably not going to talk about this book too much in this vlog just because I'm filming a separate vlog for this series. And then I don't know what else I want to read <laughs> because I want to read something alongside this and I don't know what. <laughs> I got Love on the Brain out of the library earlier and I am in the mood for a romance but then I also have these three books in the middle that I also need to read for a separate vlog <laughs> that I'm doing so basically I don't know what I want to read. I think I'm leaning more towards Love on the Brain because I know that realistically I could read this within like a couple of days. I don't know, I don't know, I will probably let you know tomorrow <laughs> what I do decide to pick up. Hello, it is now Wednesday and I am feeling feeling really restless today. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I made myself go for a run earlier because I felt like I had all of this energy that I just needed to get rid of. <laughs> I think it's because I'm off work this week. I might have said that yesterday, I can't remember, but my dad's visiting at the moment. So I booked some time off work to spend time with him, but he has plans today. So I'm seeing him tomorrow. We're gonna go out for breakfast. And then on Friday, we're gonna go for afternoon tea, which I'm really excited about. But yeah, today I just, I woke up. I don't think I slept very well last night actually and that's probably why I'm just feeling a bit jittery. <laughs> I did end up starting a new book last night. I decided to pick up Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I'm about 120 pages into this and I'm not enjoying it as much as I was expecting to. I have heard very very mixed reviews for this so I knew going into it that there would be certain things that I might find annoying. There's a lot of miscommunication in this and it's really irritating but I don't think it's irritating me as much as it would have 
if I'd gone into this not knowing in advance that there was going to be miscommunication. <laughs> Basically we're following this main character who has just got her dream job working on a project for NASA and she's really excited about it but then she finds out that her co-manager of this project, the person that she's running this project with, is a guy that she went to grad school with and she's convinced that this guy hates her <laughs> and it's a little bit annoying because I don't understand why she has this tunnel vision and why she's so convinced that this guy doesn't like her. I mean I get it <laughs> because he's not been the best to her but a lot of it is all misunderstandings and miscommunication and I feel like the way that this book is set up, it's set up for you to not like the love interest and so I'm really struggling to warm to him and I'm really struggling to want these characters to work things out. I don't know. I know that I'm not even halfway through yet so maybe this will just be a bit of a slow burn. I don't know. It's still readable and it's still fast paced so I'm gonna carry on. I mean it's it's not blowing my mind though at the moment is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna read some more of this this afternoon and then I also want to make some progress on Bands of Morning. Really enjoying it by the way. I'm not going to talk about it too much in this vlog. I think I might have said yesterday I'm filming a separate reading vlog for Miss Bourne Era 2 but yeah I'm enjoying it as much as Miss Bourne Era 1 but in a very different way because the tone is very different. Era 1 felt very serious whereas Era 2 it's a lot more fun. <laughs> I'm having a good time with it. So yeah, that's the plan for this afternoon is just to get cozy on the sofa and read <laughs> because I think the rest of the week is going to be quite busy. So I have just got home from breakfast slash brunch <laughs> with my dad and my plan for the rest of this afternoon is to finish, hopefully, <laughs> Love on the Brain. I'm over halfway through this now and I'm enjoying it a lot more. However, I still still feel a little bit disappointed with this because I feel like it had so much potential but the characters are very immature in my opinion and they're a little bit irritating. I do feel like I'm more invested in the relationship now because there's been a few cute moments that I've thought oh that's actually you know like that's quite sweet but the miscommunication in the beginning <laughs> really irritated me. I kind of knew that going in though because a lot of people have told me that this very very heavily relies on miscommunication. So yeah hopefully you're gonna finish this this afternoon. I I'm really confused though because I'm sure I heard a few people say that this was steamier than the love hypothesis and so far I haven't found that so yeah I'm not sure how this <laughs> is gonna end at the moment it feels like a solid three stars but I mean if I really love the ending I might bump that up to like a 3.5 otherwise though this has been a little bit disappointing so far. Fate's out. 
has been a few days actually since I last updated this vlog, but it's now Saturday and I finished Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I can't decide what rating <laughs> I want to give this book because it's somewhere between a two and a three stars. There was never a point while I was reading this where I thought, I hate this, I need to DNF it. <laughs> I mean, there were a few moments where I wanted to throw this book across the room because I was getting so angry <laughs> at the characters, but it was still very compulsively readable so I don't know I don't know what to do it's difficult because I did start to feel invested in the story and I really liked the side plots that were going on I actually started to really like the main couple as well and I did start to feel invested in their relationship it's just that the miscommunication started to get too much like I can forgive <laughs> miscommunication if it feels logical but but the miscommunication in this and the misunderstandings didn't make any sense. It started to feel very far-fetched in this book and there was a certain plot point as well towards the end that wasn't even to do with the romance but there was something that happened that just felt so unbelievable and wild and I was just so annoyed <laughs> because I couldn't believe what was happening. It felt very cheesy and over the top but that's the only way that I can explain it but that annoyed me <laughs> as well. However, I did start to feel invested in the characters towards the end and Ali Hazelwood has this very readable writing style that sucks you in and makes you want to keep on reading. So I don't know, I definitely didn't like it as much as The Love Hypothesis and I think what I loved about The Love Hypothesis was how the characters were very awkward but it was endearing whereas with this it was just annoying. <laughs> the smut was just okay in my opinion, I didn't actually hate it as much as I was expecting considering that I wasn't loving the rest of this book. Actually one thing I did like that I haven't spoke about I don't think actually is how the main character runs a Twitter account that's all to do with connecting women who work in STEM and that whole storyline I really enjoyed and I wish that had been maybe more of a focus. I guess actually what I would say is that I enjoyed the majority of the plot outside of the romance. I think I would say that that's what stopped this from feeling like a complete disappointment but yeah not my favourite romance of the year. Like I said I can't decide whether I want to give it two or three stars. Probably like a 2.5 and then I'll either round up or round down <laughs> depending on how generous I'm feeling when I put this on Goodreads. I don't think this has put me off reading Ali Hazelwood's books in the future. I know that she has another book that's being published next year. I think it comes out next summer maybe or next autumn. I might have just made that up <laughs> but I am interested in reading that when it comes out because I did really like the love hypothesis and I can see why other people have really enjoyed this. I think it just wasn't for me in the end. I don't actually know what I want to pick up next. <laughs> I'm thinking I might pick up a thriller to read alongside The Bands of Morning, which I am still reading. I'm hoping to finish it tomorrow because The Lost Metal comes out either Monday or Tuesday next week and I obviously want to finish The Bands of Morning before then. But otherwise I'm currently listening to an audiobook. I'm listening to The Beast by Katie Robert which is the fourth book in the Wicked Villain series. I think it's the fourth book <laughs> and I've really actually been enjoying this series. I wasn't sure if it would be for me but I've been pleasantly surprised. I think actually this is probably my favourite book in the series so far. For anyone who doesn't know the whole concept behind this series is that it's a series of companion books. So all of the books take place in the same place <laughs> but they follow different characters and it's a contemporary erotic romance series. I don't know why but I assumed before I started reading this series that it was a fantasy romance and it's not, it's contemporary romance and basically all of the books take place in this fictional city called Carver City where a guy called Hades owns a sex club so all the characters in this city are based on Disney characters. The heroes or the heroines of the story end up with the villain. So the first book was following Jasmine and Jafar, then the second book was Hades, Meg and Hercules. The third book was Hook and Tinkerbell and then this fourth book is Belle, the Beast and Gaston. Except that he's called 
called Gaetan in the book. I don't know whether that's like a copyright thing, but yeah, I think this fourth book is actually my favourite so far. And I think it's because as the books have gone on, they've become more about the smut and less about the plot. So each book does have a loose plot, but the plots are very like far-fetched <laughs> and over the top and I'm not reading the books for the plot so I think I've enjoyed them more as they've become less serious or as they've started to take themselves less seriously. I don't know if I've done a very good job <laughs> of explaining this series but I would say check trigger warnings if you need them because each book also has certain kinks which I found interesting like it's interesting how even when there's been certain kinks that aren't my personal cup of tea I've still enjoyed Katie Roberts writing so I've still enjoyed the books as a whole I think I've only got about an hour and a half left of the audiobook or maybe even less than that I'm listening on at two times speed and I do really like the audiobooks because they're narrated by a full cast I would like to try and finish this series before the end of the year because I have an idea for a video that I want to do next Next month or maybe even at the start of January where I review all of the series that I finish in 2022 and so far I haven't finished many series <laughs> and I know that technically this is a series of companion novels but I would like to try and finish this series before the end of the year and then I'd like to try some of Katie Roberts other books as well because I have enjoyed this series a lot more than I was expecting to and I really like the sound of is it Electric Idol? There's a series that's like a Hades and Persephone retelling and I've heard good things about that so I would like to try that too and I think all of Katie Roberts books are available on audio on script. Yeah that's how I've been listening to the Wicked Villain series so yeah if you have any recommendations for what I should read next from Katie Robert let me know in the comments. I think I'm going to wrap the vlog up here. I was going to continue it until tomorrow but I don't think I'm going to finish any more books before then. I might try and finish The Beast actually either tonight or tomorrow but I don't know if I'm going to have time to listen to an audiobook either tonight or tomorrow. So yeah I think I am going to wrap the reading vlog up here. I don't know how long this reading vlog is going to be because I haven't edited any b-roll yet but thanks for watching. If you made it this far let me know in the comments if you've read Love on the Brain and what you thought of it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me and I will see you next time. Bye!